Amen. Uh, well, we are recharging for the second half. The vision I have is that um, the second half ought to be greater than the first half. You, you can't just run from January to December without taking a break and review and reflect so that you can produce uh, more fruits. And this morning's session will be some bit of practicality. Um, after my session, we have Innocent Usa, and then uh, Pastor Ezekiel is almost flying, uh, almost taking off from Oweri, getting to Lagos, and is going to drive in here straight to have a session. He'll be joining us also um, in the evening. So I want to just share some stuff that I, I know would help us, not just for the second half, but for life itself. Okay, now, as we get into the second half, I, I want to encourage everyone to have a desire. A, a strong desire in terms of what we call vision. What do you see for the second half of the year? What I do um, in the office is I, I scribble uh, just like I did um, some two weeks ago. Just bring out a sheet of paper and I write July, uh, August, September, October, November, December. And you just look through it and I have the calendar just on my side. And I begin to just run through the calendar and then, and, then, and then begin to write things down about the church. I mean, I'm a pastor. You may be an engineer or you're a banker. Whatever portfolio you have, ability to look through six months and then make plans. Don't let it just be uh, to happen or let it drift. Don't allow that. Have a plan, a definite plan. But this planning doesn't happen in three minutes. It could take a whole day. You look at it, especially certain things that you didn't uh, accomplish in the first half, you now begin to tweak it and see, okay, I'll do this in August. I have some trainings to attend the second half of this year. I have to look at the dates of the training vis-a-vis -vis Sunday morning services. So can I really make this training? You know, those are the things you, you're going to sweat upstairs, but that's how giants are born. You look at July, you look at August, and then there's some dates that begin to pop up. Maybe your father's birthday, your wife's birthday, uh, and different things. And you now say, wow, if this is going to happen in October, then something must begin to happen from July. That's planning, thinking on paper. So at times you can expend like three sheets. You'll be canceling and canceling, but that's how greatness is actually born. Don't just say, Lord, make my second half a great second half. No, think. Think. And, you know, and, you know, what I do when I begin to write those things down, Holy Spirit, you're my helper, help me, you know. So it's not just about me planning. The Holy Spirit is helping me to put things in shape. But have a strong desire. Have a great desire for the second half that it's not just going to run on like that. Be very specific, okay? For anything to be dynamic, it has to be specific. Now, it's trying to be specific that your brain will sweat, Okay? Am I, am I going to open a shop by October? Okay, so what can I do between now and October to get that happening? That means I have to start, um, uh, what do you call this thing? Is it pricing or checking out? So that okay, this shop is 1.2 million. You know, just crack it. Look at your life and, and, and crack it. Marriage, family, business, finance, and write things down. Be specific and then... Um, Write it down, okay? Write the vision. Make it plain that he may run that what? Uh -huh. You can't run with the vision you've not written down. I have several notes like that. Don't just write on any kind of paper. Uh, have a notebook that you have bought or the ones you are using currently, there's still space. And just put, you know, let's assume you have a note you are using for the entire year and then you have been writing things. Then now second half, just have a whole page. You just write... Second half begins, you know, and then from the next page, begin to write things down that you want to um, kind of accomplish. Praise the Lord. Write the vision. Write it down. It doesn't have to be 20. It could be just, in fact, I encourage you to, to squeeze it to like seven max. Reduce it and let, let it be something that as you are writing it down, it's also entering your system. Now, even without opening that page, in the next three weeks, you can remember that, okay, this is on my mind for this second half. This must happen um, at this time. This must happen by, uh, by October or by November. Praise the Lord. But shoot for the moon. Even if you miss it, you land amongst the stars. Aim high. Aim for great things. I'm not saying you should deceive yourself, but aim high. And then write things down for your business. Now, this is important because when God wants to bless people, 
It doesn't bless in a vacuum. For instance, if somebody needs a shop, a new shop for her business, it's easier for your faith to attract the money for the shop. Maybe the shop is one million naira per annum or something like that. It's easier for God to even start thinking of sending you one million. But when you don't think about it, you know, you didn't plan it. It's not on your mind. It's just a wish that I wish I would get a shop. You won't see one million. You'll be seeing what you used to see before. That's why they call it provision. You understand? Provision for the vision. So this affect, it will affect your finance for the second half. I mean, look at this morning session now. Okay, it was a risk we took. We've never had it before. We used to have ministers' conference, and then we said, okay, let's have a morning session, set out the chairs, and then do publicity. And then people are here. God has kind of provided for the vision. So human, material, and financial resources move you know, in the direction of vision. So the ones that have it are the ones that will enjoy it. But if you see yourself still getting crumbs, there's no vision. If they ask you, you might say, I have a vision. You don't have. You have wishes. I mean, that's the way you put pressure on the earth to respond to what you need. If this church must grow in this place, and we have specifics, we are putting pressure on the population to come here. But if there's no vision, they can go anywhere. They can go to clubs. They can go to eateries. But because we must grow, and there are specifics, there's pressure in, this, in the realm of the invisible or the, of the spirit to, for you to come here. And the people come, one lady came, hey, two of them, after service, ah, ah, this is our first time in this church. I said, wow, who invited you? Nobody invited us. We just saw one banner like that. I said, we will come this Sunday. We will come this Sunday. Uh -huh. That's provision. <laughs> Write it down. And then when you concretize this and, and, and put it down like that, the next thing you want to do is to ask God for helps. We did that a lot here at the Goodland, heavily yesterday evening, praying for divine helps. Ladies and gentlemen, there are many factors that can ground any, any, any project. There are many factors that can hinder anything that we want to do. You can, you can have a plan, everything is set out, this money will come from this place, this one will happen like this, and just something you didn't expect, just show up and scatter everything. So that which you have written down about marriage, about home, about you know, all those things, you now take it to God and say, Lord, ah, Give me help, for vain is the help of man. Through you, I will do valiantly. I want to do valiantly concerning this, concerning that. Ask him for divine helps. Now, th th there was an area that I also had missed many times. I'm, I'm trying to fine tune more. Uh, when we have vision, either God gives you a vision for something, or you know, a, a desire is born in your heart, the temptation is always to just carry it and run. You just okay. Uh, you know, you are praying, Lord, I worship you this morning. Thank you for the second half. And God says to you, okay, I want you, Noah, to build an ark. That's what you just heard. And what do you do next? You just run to the carpenter. Yeah. But build an ark. Oh, yes. Especially for you that also are cholerics, you know, <laughs> you just want to build an ark. Oh, yeah. Do you have wood? I have some wood in my. Stop. Bring it up. Bring it up. We're building an ark. In the name of obedience, the missing link hmm, is. Not asking God for the roadmap. It's a major missing link when it comes to accomplishing vision. For instance, you need a million naira. Ask him, what can I do to get this one million? And the Holy Ghost can tell you, can you list 10 people in your life that can give you 100,000 in the next two months? And approach them. And it will amaze you how you can get one million. There's always a roadmap. There's always a roadmap to growth. There's always a roadmap for changes. There's always a roadmap, something you can do. And the, the only wise God will show you the roadmap. Do you know telling Noah to build the ark is just the beginning? The other details were even much more than build the ark. Ah, he was even telling him the kind of wood you should use, gopher wood. The kind of wood that can kind of float properly and, you know, I can carry that part, you know. But if you don't ask for the details, just go and carry plywood. Oh, yeah, do it, do it. Yeah, that wood, do plywood. Oh, yeah, just, you don't do the act. Then reinforce, you not sink. See, but God told me, yes, but roadmap. Roadmap. Roadmap could also be God telling you the timing, the manner of approach. In fact, you spend more time in the, on the roadmap than the first instruction. In, in the business world, of course, it's part of all those strategy and planning. But we as Christians, we, we are doing it with, with God. Because even when you are using secular ideologies, there are parts that 
it won't capture your, your nation, your economy. So the Holy Ghost knows those things. So he will tell you this one cannot work. We'll just do it like this. If I'd rather hear from God first and then use strategy to carry out what God has said in terms of roadmap. It's something I'd missed severally where you want to take a step. You didn't really ask for details of the roadmap. You don't just find that things are not working the way you want it to work. Then you have to go back. God, most of the time, will just be smiling. Because you will always run, run back. His roadmap is the only map that works. If you, I mean, you, you, he knows that you will run back. Then look at this man. Ken Egan was sharing a story. He was pastoring for several years. You know, <laughs> he was pastoring for several years. And then he started having this discontentment about pastoring. He was not happy. You know, and he ran to God. And God said, well, I never called you to pastor in the first place. That's not your major assignment. Wow. He felt bad. He didn't, he didn't ask, okay, what is? He just took off and started doing outreaches. So we, people make mistakes. Oh, I've made mistakes. Can I has made mistakes? We are okay. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, he went out. He started doing outreaches, like evangelism thing, all around. He now started, he, he felt the same way and then ran back. God said, you didn't even ask me. When I said, you should not pastor. Whether you should go and be a teacher. God has said, he's teaching. Ah, now God is right. And don't be afraid of making mistakes. Mm. Most of my pastors, mentors, when I talk to them, if you hear mistakes they've made, this university that you see in Kenan land, they tried to build a university in Kadino many years ago, but you didn't know. It didn't work out. Many years ago. Got the land and then, you know, it wasn't the time for it. It wasn't the location for it. Okay, so um, ask God for the roadmap. Look at it. God wanted to deliver Israel. When he sent Moses, how did he deliver them? Through Moses, signs and wonders, isn't it? It was signs and wonders for Pharaoh. But was that the same thing for Samson? Samson also was to deliver the Jews. Oh. But was it signs and wonders? He was fighting. You fight. Double. You fight the Philistines. But when Jesus came, was it signs and wonders of fighting? No. You die. <laughs> so you can't assume that God is telling you to go and deliver the people as you go and die. Yours might be down and they will follow you. I mean, look at the difference. Moses did signs and wonders, you know, and then they, they were delivered. Samson was raw energy, fighting. But Jesus is own. You're going to deliver the world, you're going to die. So there's a roadmap. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that the visions God has given you for your business, your career, your household, the Holy Spirit will begin to open your eyes to finding the right roadmap or maps in the name of Jesus Christ. God will put it in your heart. The details will come in Jesus' name. And by the way, when you pray for roadmap, ready to hear strange things from God. When I say hear from God, I don't mean uh, God will not say, hey, lie, lie, lie. How many times did I call you? God, God you called me three times. Sit down. It's just be bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. For instance, maybe you've never asked people for money before. And then God is telling you, can you list ten people that you have closest to and ask them to give you a hundred thousand and let them know what you want to do it for it's not to buy clothes it's for business now naturally you don't do it but now god is asking you to do something that's not your style that's where some people even miss roadmap they just they don't want to hear it how ah, can i go and ask and if you miss that roadmap you miss the blessing so you just, oh, I don't like to do this, but this is what's coming to my heart. And then you write the names of your maybe mother-in-law or your brother-in-law and everyone. And say, okay, well, I, I feel you, should, you need to give me 100,000. I need a million actually. But your portion of the 1 million is 100,000. Invest in my business. I'm not saying to come back home. And then, and then you see people giving you monies and that's how it starts. Okay, so roadmap is important. Uh, it means asking God for counsel. Well, when I have a situation in church, and it's disturbing me, I run to God and I ask him for counsel. It's almost like asking for a roadmap. Lord, how do I deal with this situation? This is like a crisis. You know, I just say, I, I need your wisdom. You're the only wise God. It's asking for a roadmap. And then, while you're praying, at, but sometimes, as I finish praying, something just comes to my heart. Call the person now. Call her now. Or call him now. And say this to this person. And every time you do that, it is settled. And that sometimes I pray, Lord, how do I do? He said, don't do anything. I said, don't do anything. Leave it. And I stopped talking about the matter and the thing resolves itself. For him to say that, he knows what he's doing. So it's good to always ask God. And if you can grow in this dimension, you, your, your, your life will be better. You'll be more mature as a Christian, especially. Asking God for 
road map. Uh, when I go to see my pastor, um, I have pastors anyway, um, and every time I say, Lord, I just have maybe 20 minutes to talk with this great man. These are the things bothering me with my, my father. Put answers in his mouth, and I now pray in tongues, so in case he doesn't get it, the tongues will make him say it. Put answers in his mouth. So every time I get this, ah, sir, this thing is bothering me about the church, uh, finance, or project. And then before I land, he'll just close his eyes like this. Mm. And then the next statement, this is what he should have done. This happened to us in 1997, blah, blah, blah. I know God is actually giving me roadmap. What, what I'm saying is roadmap does only come from maybe you're hearing God. God will often use people to reveal to you what to do. Now, which is my next um, point there, that you should seek counsel. Seek counsel. Seek counsel. Counsel. That area, I'm, I'm talking about the vision that you have. Don't just do things out of zeal. Many have been grounded like that. Seek counsel. Proverbs 15, verse 22. Hmm. Seek counsel. <laughs> Leaders, we learn in a hard way when it comes to this that some mistakes people have made. You just felt, ah, God has spoken to me. You're just driving on. Seek counsel. Proverbs 15, 22, please. Very powerful, very powerful uh, verse. Talking about counsel. In the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Do we have our media guys around? Proverbs 15, 22. Are we there? Can you? Okay, thank you. He said, without what? Purposes are what? So that purpose is like the vision that you had at number one, isn't it? You had a vision, I want to do this in October. I want to do this by November uh, or by September. But he said, without counsel, you will end up in disappointment. Though God spoke to you. He said, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the what? Multitude of counselors, the purpose will come to pass. You are starting an events company. You are starting a new branch of your business. You are doing a project. Please. You need to talk to people that have done projects. Stop doing things by yourself. If not, there will be disappointments upon this. As, I mean, even if you're a single man or woman here, you're about to get married, I encourage you, please, talk to married people. Stop being, stop saying, my wife can never be rude. Don't say that. My husband can never beat me. Don't say that. Many have received shockers when it comes to business, when it comes to project, when it comes to life, because they were too naive, just naive, in the name of innocence. But you can suffer innocently. Oh, yes, many have suffered like that. Ask people. I, I, I mean, I would love those who are getting married this year or next year. Look at couples in the church, wherever church you attend, uh, 20 years in marriage, and schedule a meeting with the man. And ask him, ah, Oga, I'm getting married in, sir, I'm getting married in December, uh, and I know, I know you've been married, and from the little I see, it looks like you guys have, you are okay. But I know you've gone through your own things. Uh, are there things you want to tell me as a husband? <laughs> you first say, <laughs> he said there are many things. There are many things. Me, I've seen things, 15 years. I've seen things. Sometimes when you get married, the person you are married, you think you didn't know the person before. It's the same person. Just that the marriage revelation is revealed. <laughs> the same way if you ask her too, she will tell you. Sometimes I can, I can be very, they call it paranoia. <laughs> very, very unpredictable. I can be playing with you <laughs> at 12 noon and be somebody entirely different by 4 p.m. I mean entirely different. Entirely. And I mean it. Now, she knows that. So when I just enter the room and lock the door, you just leave me. Me, myself, will come out that door and seek you. <laughs> but if you trouble me at the wrong time, you, you have peace. So those are things they will tell you. Young woman, stop getting carried away. Oh, my, my bow can never slap. Oh, he can never watch a fly. Oh, it's just different. If his father is like that, the condition his father went through is different from the condition he's going through. Ask. Ask other women that have been married, and they will tell you. They will tell you that one of the most critical times in the life of couples is that process of pregnancy and delivery. Nobody plans that. 
you're all together, loving each other. When pregnancy starts, everything changes. Whether first pregnancy or, or fourth pregnancy, everything changes. They will tell you, as a woman, so you will know that you are pregnant, the man, things are going to change. Your hormones will change. Uh, you will not behave the same way to him. You might not be able to make love like, like you used to make love. And that can stretch for a long time, especially the uh, last part of the delivery, the last uh, four months, and then the delivery time. Now, that process... Hey, my mama Kata, ask me. <laughs> ask me. Oh, you want to make love? Oh, yeah. But ah, you look at the tummy like this, you feel like a wicked man. You know? So, oh, ah, hey, you're not doing what you need to do. <laughs> and that lingers on. So they will tell you, so you now know how to handle it. The same thing for business. Oh, you want to start a business, you're excited. Ah, I have this idea. You know, young people. Excited. I have this idea. In fact, I've seen it when I just start the product just be selling. <laughs> there was one man of one pastor who was starting a church. He came to me. He said, God gave him a name. The way he was describing the name, it's like he came, an angel wrote the name. And he was so excited. I said, Okay, go and check CAC. We didn't even need to check CAC. It was the next week. One church in Alabado altar. The same name. Established since. So, so you want to do, do this business? It's a new thing. I know everybody just like it. In fact, the sales just be going like this. No problem. Go and ask the businessmen in church. Seek counsel. Visit them on Sunday evenings. Take them out and ask them questions. The bits you get here and there will make you a better businesswoman, a better businessman. Come and say, I hear. Okay? Talk to people. Relevant people. Especially in the line of your business or your life. You want to travel out of the country before you jump out. Ask those who have gone out. Send mails to them. They will give you some bits. Counsel, you know, in the more teacher counsel, there is safety. Ask. Entertainment, you're a guitarist, whatever you are doing, photography, ask people. Ask people, I want to do this. What do you think? There's no harm in asking, but there's a lot of harm in not asking. A lot. In fact, it's better for you to over ask. Because even while you are at it, you keep asking. We have four daughters. I was a bit bothered. I said, God should give me a son. You know, a son, a son, a son. Where is a son? I thought you were going to give me a, also a son, the fourth son. And then before Pastor Bimbo delivered, the Holy Spirit said, This one is going to be a girl and have a plan for her life. I was even scared to tell Pastor Bimba that I hope she will not. Uh, so I kept it. And then the, the, the son daughter came out. <laughs> you know, I remember the, the hospital, they demanded the name immediately. That, and we had had names, you know, you know, Elijah, David, David. So when, I said, and God told me this thing. You know, I said, Holy Spirit, now, oh yeah, I've agreed now. The name. Now I went to my pastor and I said, I put your word in his mouth. So I went to see him. I said, ah, so this is what I thought too, but God spoke to me but agidiciously still. He looked at me with one wicked eye. You are carrying a king in your hand. Never do that in your life. In your life. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. And several things he said. And everything disappeared. Look, ask questions. Stop suffering in silence. Stop counting losses in business. Ask questions. He said to me, he said, if they told him that he would be in order, when he started ministry, you can even slap the angel. But say, look at me now. I am in order. And I'm reaching the entire world. So there are many things you don't like naturally, but it's a thing that will make you great. You great. Somebody else might be different. But for you, this is your perfect, what? Gift. Talk to people, set, organize meetings, discuss with people, and start it today, if possible, amen. A little question here, a little answer there, you know, and then you'll find that, you know, you, you, you're better off. Praise the Lord. So the first thing we talked about um, is um, desire, and then that's, that's strong desire. Your life moves in the direction of your desire. 
If there's no desire, you just be moving around. And that moving around anyhow, you find that months are just counting. At the end of the year, you've not attempted anything. So you must have a place you are running towards. We said to God, uh, pastors, let good land become the rallying point for growth in Lagos. And it's going to happen in the next two, three years. It's going to be the rallying point. Nobody can fight it. Nobody can, you know. But it's a desire that people will come from all over Lagos to attend services here at the good land. Rallying point. Rallying point. Rallying point. What are you aiming at? What are you saying? And then you now carry that thing to God. Help me. We were praying, uh, pastors at the retreat, we put the map of Lagos on a particular table, like, like you know, a war chest, or a war, t- war, war table, and then each pastor picked local government. And then, you, and we are fasting, and you are praying over the local government. Badagri, uh, Kosofe, and calling people from those local government, come to good land. You know, and then you see that those things start happening small by small. After a while, the momentum builds. In the next three to five years, you will see it happen. Oh, you will see it happen. So you must have a vision. What you are running towards, what you are aiming at. And then you take it to God in prayers for roadmap. And that's where we are now anyway. Tidying up the roadmap of how that can happen. Uh, so that's the same thing can happen for your business. What, what worked for Moses might not be the same thing for Samson. In fact, in, if you notice, Moses was trying to do it like Samson. At first, remember, fighting his way, it led to delay of 40 years. That's what a, road, a wrong road map can cost. He thought he would fight his way through because, no, he went to the wilderness. If I went God without calling him, I'm not doing it again. Uh-huh. That's when you are ready. And then you seek counsel. And then the next thing is your health. Your health. Nothing great. I saw this quote several um, years ago, nothing great was ever achieved without enthusiasm. Are you hearing me here? Is it clear? Time, is it clear? Okay. Nothing great was ever achieved without what? Enthusiasm. What, is, what are the similar words for enthusiasm? I like that. Passion. Zeal. Energy. Zest. And you need abundance of that to fulfill destiny. And the major carrier of that is your body. Tired bodies can't fulfill greatness. If I look at all those giants in, in the faith, you look at Abraham, the way God was talking to him, he looked like a very gentle man. But the day I saw that it took 318 soldiers to go and fight, then you begin to change your mind about him. How do you fight war? He said, by going there, why are you why are doing like this now? <laughs> ah, 318 soldiers. That in fact, the Bible says trained. Ah, that means after uh, work during the day, farm, cooking, they all gather. Oh yeah, boom. Come. They were trained. They were so trained, other kings were demanding for them. That's energy. Don't be slow. Don't be dry. 318 soldiers, not that 318. Trained in his house. How do you train somebody to fight? Is it by cooking rice? They must have been doing well, oh yeah, use, oh yeah, gone, oh yeah, I mean, arrows, oh yeah. No, he didn't get it right, they hit his head. Focus, focus. Yes, good boy, next one. And they fought so well. That's energy. You need your health. And a major part of that health is mental health. Mental health. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We've had so much about what you eat, um, your diet. But a major part of enthusiasm or passion, as my brother mentioned out there, is your mental health. Have you noticed that when your mind is not in shape, you don't perform well? That's mental health. And Satan has used that to tamper with many dreams. For me, for instance, when people close to me hurt me, it can affect me for a whole week. Hurt. I suppose like that. Just find out when you are hurt, when somebody hurts you like that, you are drained. You are healthy physically, but mental health. I'm just drained. I can't focus. I can't function. How can he do that? How can she do that? And then my mind begins to spiral, thinking, thinking, thinking. I don't know what yours are, but somebody, somebody else is worry and anxiety. Are there things you can do now to 
to win over that. That when this thing happens again, it will never affect me again. Because if you don't deal with that, the devil will be using it a lot. Mental health, the state of your mind. For some people, it's perception management. How you perceive things. If you look at your history, the way you perceive things, it's not healthy for you. You always see yourself as a failure, as a non-entity. Somehow, you, when they don't greet you well, it's because I don't have a baby. When they greet you well, they are de deceiving me. I, I, I don't know whether I understand mental health. When they over greet you, you say, ah, maybe because uh, it's just a style, a style of trying to say, go give you a baby. When they don't greet you well, it's because, you know, all kinds of analysis that... You have to protect your mind. It's a seat of energy. My pastor says that he doesn't read letters before service. No matter where it's coming from, I won't allow one person to hinder 50,000. He's guarding his mind. You don't open a letter, it's one cousin talking nonsense. You don't feel, you know, you feel angry. You know, you're going to minister to 50,000 people. He said the secretary knows. The secretary knows when he opens the letter, if he has to see it, he said the letter will just, <laughs> man, greatness. He will just underline like three, um, um, uh, like three lines or sentences. I said when he gets that page, that's the only thing he will read and pass it away. The guy knows that that's what is okay for him, if he has to read at all. He's protecting your mind. What can you do to protect your mind from worries? from anxiety, from irrelevant tata, from things that, that disempower you. What can you do? Start thinking about that because without sound mental health, believe me, that enthusiasm will not be there. I've seen people, for instance, the reason why they're always depressed is their family members. My cousin is there. My cousin is uh, almost divorcing. My, I, I say, ah, ah. so why shouldn't your cousin divorce? What does your cousin know about marriage? Your cousin doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go to church, doesn't go to any marriage seminar, doesn't read any book. So what else do you expect? But you see, we just carry things. And I'm hoping that, uh, you know, St. Usa would deal with that. Because these are the real things that make people not to function well. Do you know, when I started traveling, you, I believe that when you are traveling, you must decaca. <laughs> and it's because of poverty. You wear boogie shoe. You, I now go to UK, I saw a white guy, he was wearing nika. Nika and slippers, not bathroom slippers, but slippers. Transatlantic flight. I said, eh? <laughs> that, means, that mindset is not right. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> nika, nika and t shirt Not that you are going from Lagos to Ibadan, eh? from UK to US. And you will face immigration like that. Ah, me, if I'm going to face immigration, <laughs> they, they will be greater. Eh? Ah, you will know I'm, I'm coming. Ah, eh? Nika! And now I see them all over. I mean, sorry, during summer. Nika, t shirt, you carry one small bag with a phone, enters the play and just sit and sleep up. Eh? So there are many things we carry in our minds that are not okay. That this is how it should be. It shouldn't be like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be like that. Mindset. Mindset. Mental health. What, how do you define riches? Is it when you enter somebody's house and you see a 100 inch TV? If that's your definition, your own 32 inch will cause depression. That's what happens. How do you, how do you, how do you define that somebody is doing well? That can make you be depressed. If your mentality is somebody must have uh, Mercedes Benz for this to happen. Ah. So you, you, I, I start redefining things. I was with my pastor one day, he was wearing one white shirt. One, oh, this is native, this white um, native, you know. He looked at me and said, ah, you, got, you are even more expensive than me. He said this thing now, it's about 100 naira per year that it, so, he said it does this so that members will not be struggling to buy something expensive. Just there. Just there. Simplicity. So change the way you define things. Some things you call rejection is not rejection. If you, don't, if you don't redefine it well, and I'm hoping that Innocent will talk a bit about that more, you'll just find that you are disempowered. It's not somebody has a big house that is great, and you now read about uh, Warren Buffett, that the house is living, he's been living in there for how many years? 30 years. The same place he's been living. He doesn't even use phone. Do you believe that, Warren Buffett? 
He's a billionaire. He doesn't use phone. He writes things like this to send to his managers. Right, right. You guys should do this this week and send it to them. And his uh, hobby is eating popcorn, watching TV. So, because many things that we think about are affecting us from making progress. Your mental health. How do you handle worry? How do you, you need to adjust things. I read a book called Prophetic and Pitfalls. And that's one of the most powerful books I've read about leadership. He said something, and that's helped me now. He said, when God was telling Moses that let him destroy these Jews, he should have allowed him. That every leader must be able to design who can be rescued and who cannot be rescued. If you don't know that, if you don't have that discernment, in a bit to rescue, who should not be rescued? You'll be rescued. <laughs> You'll be dead yourself. Are you getting this mystery? Yes. Did Jesus pray for Judas? Did he pray for Peter? Did Peter survive? He's survivable. So now I'm adopting that also. You, you, that's the way you design this one. Let me just leave her or him. Instead of killing yourself. Do you know Moses could not rescue them and he destroyed him too? I have never read something like in my life before. That, when God, that means the only wise God, when he was saying it, he knew what he was saying. He was even praying for them. Not everybody is intercessorably rescuable. Let me use that word. And you look at Jesus Christ. He said to Peter, I prayed for you that your faith faileth not. I prayed for you. I prayed for you that your faith fail not. And after you are strengthened, in you, strengthen thy brethren. And the guy made a mistake, but he bounced back. But there was no place he prayed for Judas. And he killed himself. And Jesus fulfilled his destiny. Peter, too, you know, so. And you look at Moses, trying to rescue the people that cannot be rescued. They now forced him to make a mistake himself. The people that he was trying to save were not saved. He himself did not enter the land. What's the benefit of that? I'm saying that so that you won't be carrying on next emotional baggage about people. You don't need it. About family members or friends, especially after you have counseled somebody, you spoke to the person, you even prayed a bit, know where the limits are and let it be. And God sometimes asks me questions. Can you remember this person seven years ago? Where's that person now? So are you now dead? That if this person is not in your life or in your ministry, does it mean the ministry will go down? Never. And he was giving me lists. So stop all this. Stop this. Stop all this. Stop it. I said, yes, sir. Stop it. When my parents fight now, I expect it. Not that I'm praying for it. But what else should you do? Because they don't know better. I can just be counseling them and praying for them. But I can't say, uh, I should not be teaching my dad five love languages. <laughs> eh? At 80, daddy, mommy's love language is act of service. Can you imagine? You can't can, can walk. My pastor said his dad wanted to go to Bible school before, just before he died. He said they should not give him fun. He was angry. He now wanted to meet him. Okay, if you go to Bible school now and they say keys to exploits, where, where, <laughs> where will you do the exploits? Like, you should just relax. <laughs> it's just relaxing. Uh, dynamics of vision. Okay, the vision you see now, where will you carry the vision out? <laughs> eh? At 104. You're already at 102 at that time. That, that did just rest. And then he passed on. So, health. Another thing that helps our health is um, lifestyle changes. Nobody here will be like Judas. Let me, say, let me prophesy that. Nobody here will be like Judas. I, I can hear you. Amen. Nobody here will be like Judas. But like Peter, when we fall, we will rise again. I speak it in the name of Jesus Christ. Like Peter, who bounce back higher in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not the son of perdition. You are not. You are not. You are not. The grace of God keeps you standing in Jesus' mighty name. Okay? Now, about health. This is very important. We have mental health, lifestyle changes. Of course, eating habits. I discovered that, that the way you eat in the night, you are spoiled the next day. Because you wake up already tired. So, eating habits. Uh, it, it kills your energy. Eating habits. Uh, man is just what he eats. 95% of disease come from faulty diet. That's by me uh, medicals. Uh, your recreation habits. Sometimes you sit on, on the TV till late. You now find that you don't have enough sleep. 
and then the next day you are misbehaving in the office. You can't work well, you can't do anything well. What changes can you make so you can have energy to produce fruits? Smartphones, TV, and phone habits. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. That, this leads me to the next part that says, to fulfill that vision, we need sacrifice. When I sacrifice, what are the things you are willing to give up so that that thing you are looking at can come to pass? You have to give up something. Nothing goes for nothing. So to say, sacrifice. What adjustment are you going to make with your, with your time, with your spend it, thank you. I also get ready for uh, NIV, uh, the same verse. It said, all things are what? Lawful for me, but all things are not what? Expedient. All things are lawful, but not all things, ed uh, all things edify not. Can, can we have that in NIV? It, it, it says, I, I, I can do everything, but not everything will profit me. I mean, we have a baby at home now. Then, thank you. He said, I have the right to do what? You have the right to go to all the weddings this year. You have the right to be going to visit everybody in town. You have the right to go for all the events in your family. You have the right. See, he said, but not everything is what? So, rescue time. Rescue energy by going for the beneficiary. He said, I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is what? I have the right to do anything, but not everything is what? Constructive. So you're going to look at your life. Ask some of us, every event in your family you are going, traveling up and down. No, 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 don't need all that. As you mature, you don't need all that. It was from a billionaire in Nigeria that I learned something. He said he gets invitation endlessly. But one day, he now asks himself, what do they really want? Is it me or the money? So now he plans, okay, this one is 25,000, he will send it to them. That's how he rescued his time. You can't be going everywhere. It's not every event you must attend. And God forbid that you die on the highway in Jesus' name. I mean, it's very horrible to die as he went for a name ceremony in Ibadan. God forbid, anyway. I mean, not everywhere you go, to, I learned that from my pastors too. Reverend Sam, Pastor Bishop Oedebo, they, they, they stab <laughs> events like mad <laughs> to rescue time. To rescue energy. You have a project starting on Monday morning, very important. You now travel for one wedding. Wasting time, dancing, standing in reception. What, what, what are you doing? Sat off Saturday and then I'll be rushing on Sunday. Monday and already. What's that? You got to grow out of that, okay? Sacrifice. You will have to technically give up certain things to see dreams fulfilled. Please, I have not said you should not attend family function because people carry messages out of context. Okay, but what are the things you're going to give up based on where you are going? I had to face it in my family, even in this church. I had to do it, wasn't easy. There are some people's weddings that my mind was there, but I can't go there with my leg because if I go there, then I have signed for many others. The same thing, naming ceremonies. There's some people's babies. I go the day before, three days before, in the night, 11 p.m., to pray for the baby. But I cannot attend the naming because if I should go that, I must attend many namings. We have people on the same kid that in church, maybe 20. You attend, well, why are you not attend the remaining? Is it because of Bayesa State? <laughs> That's why people are thinking all kind of things. And it's not like that. You attend a particular wedding, you, can, you have to attend a particular level. So think, what can you give up? So you can harness your time and your energy to bring out the best of your life. I look, I'm looking at the second half of the year. Is it possible you focus on two or three things mainly and, 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 and doggedly stab other things to make it work? I mean, we, are, we have a baby at home now. There are many trips I'm supposed to go this second half. I'm stabbing them because I got to be at home with her. Because when, it say, when we say sacrifice, then priority comes in. What are your priorities? God first. I mean, that's on my expenses. I have to shut down so I could give more. He said, you have a right to do anything, isn't it? You have a right to be buying sneakers now, to be buying shoes every week. It's your money. But some things I have to stop and endure with what I have so I can have extra monies to give. So what, what can you do to harness your finance better? What can you do to harness your time and energy better? Are there things just taking your energy for taking sake? Do you agree that if you don't deal with TV and smartphone, 
you will not read effectively. So make your choice. There are many books to read for your head to be correct. For you to be wiser. If you don't deal with that smartphone, as shankolo as it is, it will shock you how many books on read and how many irrelevant things you are reading on social media. The same thing with TV. So make your choice for second half. God, then you. You are the carrier of the vision. Your mental state. So what are you going to do to, to have time for yourself? What are you going to do to have time for yourself? There are many schedules I've cancelled last minute at times because I'm not in the best frame of mind. I can't see you. I just call the pastor or call the friend. I'm sorry I can't make this meeting. You guys will forgive me. And not that I'm going to go to Kotonu is to spend three hours in the room to refresh. For your family, what can you do to make things better? Is there money you can save somewhere so you can buy more clothes for your kids? That money you are wasting on friends. Every Friday, just go there and be sitting down. But then they calculate you, you spend 15000 And yet, you don't give your family money. Very prodigal lifestyle. What can, you, what can you cut out so you can have more? It's, it's a sacrifice. It's going to be painful. It will affect you, but you'll be better off for it. Praise the Lord. Okay? Your expenses, you know. And then finally, um, James chapter 2, verse 14. Man, by December, you'll be a different person entirely. 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 You are fired up. You are super blessed. You'll be a different person in your ministries, in your business, in your, as a staff, wherever you are. As a husband or wife, you'll be different. And by the way, the smartphone is also killing marriages. I'm sure you heard that from survey all over the world. People are no more communicating. There was a day at home, my daughter literally seized my phone. Daddy. In fact, one day they just hid it. I didn't even know that it was hid. I just thought I left it. After searching and searching, I just saw one of my daughters smiling. I said, what happened? I said, Daddy, we are behind it. I got the message, and I sat with them. Talk to your husband. Talk to your wife. Talk, talk, talk. 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 Ask questions. Laugh. Dance. Play music. It's in vain we help others and our families are suffering. It's, it's foolishness. All your friends in the office, all the guests in the office, they're happy about you. Yeah, he's a nice man. And if they, if they interview your wife, you say he's a devil. What's your benefit in that? What's your benefit in that? Spend time with your kids. They have questions to ask <laughs> when rain is falling and there's thunder. When they hear pirigidi, they run from their room and they scatter. Some to Pastor Bimbo, then you know, come like this. When you see your child beside, what do you do? <laughs> or you embrace them. There's a book I'm reading now. The man said, The family knows that he will not sacrifice them for church growth. They know. In the name of success in ministry, that the family knows he will not. So that's a flow. Attention to them. And they are growing. Let them never hate Christ because of you. Let them not say it was Jesus that took our daddy from us. Fine, there will be times that they, they, they will be without you. They understand. But there's a flow that makes them know that this man or this woman loves us. And cares for us. And for you businessmen too. Let, the, let, let not your child say it's money you are worshipping. Because anything money, you don't care about them. Okay, James 2.14. He said, what does it profit, brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food? 16. And one of you say unto them, depart in peace. But be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not what? Works is dead. The last thing I want to mention is action. I know you have prayed. Oh, Lord, help me. Give me wisdom. Let this happen. Open doors for me. But take steps. Action. No matter how small. Faith, 
In fact, the action is a proof that you have faith. That you are believing God for a fruitful second half. It's a proof. It's a proof that you have faith. Thank you, Jesus.